What's up guys, it's Carter Kid, and today I'm going to be showing you how to go from this Okay, so square one isn't my strength, as you can see right now To this Now I've already done two of these videos for 3x3 and Mega Minx But today I'm going to be showing you how to go from absolute beginner on square one to sub 15 or even sub 12 These tips have brought me from not knowing how to solve a square one to around 10 seconds So I hope these can help you too So first let's start off with hardware By the way all the resources mentioned here like videos and algorithm sheets will be in the description Now these days there's only one really good choice for hardware and that's the MGC square one Although it didn't live up to its expectations this puzzle is still really good and will meet your square one needs mostly This puzzle is pretty affordable at $20 it's not too expensive for a square one However if you do not have $20 to spend, I recommend you get the Yushin Little Magic, it's just $10, or the Volt V2, which I believe is the same price as the MGC. However, your best bet is just to get the MGC, so I wouldn't waste money getting the other two. Now, here are the steps to solving a square one. So, as you can see, the square one is a shape-shifting puzzle, so it's not always going to be in a cube shape like in 3x3. So, the first step is to solve the cube shape, like this. The next step is to orient the corners onto the top of the puzzle, and then orient the edges and then permute the corners and then permute the edges as you can see this case is not possible on 3x3 since those two edges are swapped but i'll talk about that later and those are the steps of solving a square one now this method is called the vandenberg method and it is the most commonly used method among top solvers this is the method i recommend you learn as it is the easiest to comprehend and in my opinion the best now the tutorial I suggest you learn how to solve a square one from is either Tingman's tutorial or Cube Master's tutorial. They both outline the steps very well, and with Sam Fang being a world class square one solver, he has very good advice on this event. Now once you've learned how to solve a square one, here's what the most basic solve would look like. You create the beginner cube shape by getting all the eight edges to the top of the puzzle like this, and then solving the cube shape, and then you intuitively solve the corner orientation like this, and just like this we've solved the edges, and now you would solve the corner permutation, and then you would do adjacent adjacent over and over pretty much until you solve the cube, and then your edge permutation is finished. Now at first, this way of solving a square one is completely fine, but after you get comfortable with the beginner's method, here are the steps to take after that. So you should learn a method of cube shape called scallop kite. I'll leave video tutorials to scallop kite cube shape up on screen and down in the description. Basically here's how it works you do moves and create blocks together until you form this cube shape where it looks like there's a scallop on top and a kite on the bottom it could be flipped if you know how to do it from other angles but yeah and then you solve it with one slice to fist fist which is a very easy cube shape and if you're really feeling adventurous and really want to get into square one you can also learn advanced cube shape which has 90 cases and it covers every possible cube shape case so that's basically what you should do for cube shape and now let's get on to corner orientation now corner orientation is pretty intuitive but you should know all the algorithms and many angles to do it from. For example, this case, when the corner is right below this block of two, you can do this. Or when it's over here, you can move this over and then do this. Or when it's back here, you can also do this. And now when it comes to EO, you should also know all the algorithms. These algorithms are pretty easy to learn. There are some really good cases, for example, M2. And all the other cases aren't that hard to learn. And with muscle memory, you can get really fast at them. Now for the EO and CO algs, I will leave videos in the description with algorithms for the steps of the puzzle. However, for stuff like the alternate angle CO algs, you'll just have to play around with the cube on your own and find them by yourself. Now for corner permutation and edge permutation, all you need to do is just learn full CP and intuitive EP. Now Cube Master has a great video on intuitive edge permutation and basically what you do is you set up cases to adjacent adjacent and solve the rest of the puzzle. Here's an example when you have a U perm on top and a Z perm on the bottom. You can do adjacent adjacent from here where you have two swapped edges on the bottom and it sets up to adjacent adjacent like this. However, for some cases, I do recommend you learn EP algorithms. Here are two cases that you should learn. These are the good W perms, and they're just two EPs canceled into each other. So for the first one, if the opposite colors are here in the front and here at the back, what you do is you do op op, and then when you're about to finish it, you just come over here and do an M2, like you're doing adj adj, and then just solve the rest of the puzzle. And the non-opposites are back here. And what I do is I just do adj adj, and then cancel into op op. It's like you're doing an equator flip, but instead, you're taking this piece over to here instead of keeping it over there. So, 
just finish the puzzle like that. And as I mentioned, equator flips, that is a vital part of getting fast to square one, canceling into equator flips. So right here, I have adj adj in the back, and what most people would do is they would do adj adj, and then they would do their equator flip. But as you can see, that's pretty inefficient, and you can actually cancel it. So again, here's the case. You do the algorithm, and before you're about to finish it, you can cancel into the equator flip like this. And it's really useful for square one. Here's another example. We have a U-perm. If you really want to get fast at square one, I recommend you learn the U-perm algorithms. But here's what you would do with intuitive EP. You would do edge edge here, and then do edge edge here. And before finishing, you can cancel into the bar flip like this, and it saves a lot of time. I recommend you save the bar flip for last, because if you're flipping it during CP or in the middle of EP, it can be less efficient. Now, here's a really important thing that you should know how to do is when you have parity, how to reduce to it. Now, in some cases, if I just have add parity on top and a random PLL on the bottom, I'll just do add parity and then deal with the EPLL on the bottom or on the top. However, there's also something else you can do is reduce to parity. So I know if I do op op from this angle, I'll just get parity on top. So I'll just go straight into op op and then I'll be able to do my parity out. Although parity is annoying, if you don't want to learn CSP, this is the only way to deal with it. Or you can learn something called CP parity, which while you're solving current corner permutation, it gets rid of parity. The parity algorithm is a bit hard to learn at first, however with some muscle memory you can get really good at it. But it does take a bit of time off of your solve, so if you really want to get into square one, you can learn CSP. I recommend learning it at about sub 12. Now if you have something like this, where it's just parity on the bottom, instead of using adj adj to get it to the top, what you can do is slice it up and then do the parity alg, and that's a much more efficient way of solving it. Now another thing to do is to predict CP during EO. So here's an example when you have 1-1 one, one EO. All of the EP algs that I use besides one preserve CP, so it's really easy to recognize. If I look at this EO case, I can see that these two corners need to swap, so I know that there's headlights in the back and I see that these corners are swapping diagonally, so I know I'll have to do NJ, so I'll just do 1-1, one, one, and then I'll go straight into my CP alg, and then I'm done with CP, and in this case, EP. If you recognize your CP during EO, you can also cancel moves. As you can see in this solve, I recognize that I had NJ, and then I actually cancel during EO, so I could get right into EP. Also, plus twos don't count at home. So after you've learned scallop kite cube shape, full CO and EO, full CP and intuitive EP, all you need to do is get good at turning and grind solves. For example, drilling the parity alg will make you get better at it, and learning popper finger tricks for all the algs you use will make you get a lot faster. In most video tutorials where they teach you algs, they usually include finger tricks, so make sure to keep an eye out for those. After you've learned proper finger tricks and how to turn well, just grind solves and you'll see your solves getting faster as you do more. Now at first, the shape-shifting nature of a square one will be really confusing, but as you do more solves, it'll become more natural. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If this helped you, make sure to drop a like and comment down below, and let me know if you want more videos like these. Thank you guys again so much for watching. See you guys next time.